So when work is done, there is some movement occurring. In doing this, we are transferring energy throughout the system. The work energy theorem describes the different types of work and the different forms of energy. The technical definition of energy refers to the property of an object that describes its ability to produce change in itself or the environment. So what does this mean? Well, there are lots of different forms of energy. Electromagnetic, sound, thermal, chemical, kinetic, potential. These are just a few examples of ways in which an object can be changed. Say we have a box to which a force is applied. This force causes the box to move over some distance. The work done on the box can be described as the force times the distance. In this case, x final minus x initial. This gives us a basis for our work equation. From Newton's laws, we know that a net force will cause an acceleration of that mass, which is given by the equation force equals mass times acceleration. We can then substitute into our work equation. Assuming the acceleration is constant, we can relate this back to our kinematics equation for velocity. Rearrange this for acceleration, and we can substitute that expression into our work equation. So seriously, how does this help us? Well, we can cancel out our distance, and then apply that oh-so-handy distributive property to give us an expression for the work done on a mass when it changes its velocity. So the net work done on a system is the change in the quantity one-half mass times velocity squared and is the first part of what is known as the work energy theorem. The energy associated with the work done by that net force does not disappear after the force is removed. That energy simply gets transformed into the object's energy associated with its motion. Now ultimately we want to relate the work done on an object to the energy. Our object is in motion. Kinetic is a Greek word used to describe something that is in motion. So we can define kinetic energy as the work done on a body to set it in motion at some velocity. This means that the energy supplied by the net force used to set the object in motion is transferred into the energy associated with the motion of the object itself. So the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work done on the object. Then what happens if we increase the amount of work done on an object? Well, this means that a net force is being applied which will cause an acceleration and in turn increase the velocity. And the final kinetic energy will be greater than the initial kinetic energy. In this scenario, we say that work done on the system is positive. If we decrease the amount of work done, then the velocity will also decrease, giving us less kinetic energy than when we started. This situation we describe as having a negative work done on the system. Suppose a 30 kilogram package on a conveyor belt is moving at 0 0.500 meters per second. What is its kinetic energy? Well, we know the mass and we are given the velocity. And we want to know the kinetic energy. This works well for us because our equation for kinetic energy involves both the mass and the velocity. Plugging this in, we get 3.75 joules of kinetic energy. Now suppose you push on that 30 kilogram package with a constant force of 120 newtons through a distance of 0 0.8 meters. If there is a friction force of 5.0 newtons, how much work do you do on the package? Since we are dealing with forces, it could be useful to draw a free body diagram of our package. There is no vertical motion, so our force of gravity is balanced by our normal force. We are pushing the box to the right with an applied force of 120 newtons, while the kinetic friction acts in the opposite direction at a magnitude of 5.0 newtons. Our net force is simply our horizontal forces added together. We have 120 newtons being applied to the right, and we have a 5 newton friction force being applied to the left. Since the left is opposite the right, we are going to subtract that, and we end up with a net force of 115 newtons. Our net work is our net force over our distance, or 115 newtons times 0.8 meters. This gives us 92 joules of work done. Now keep in mind this is the net work done. Because friction is acting against you, you would actually be doing more than 92 joules of work to move the box as much as you did. It is interesting to look at the forces involved and how they individually do work. You are doing a positive amount of work while friction is doing a negative amount of work all at the same time. 
So some of the energy you expend to move the box is converted into something other than kinetic energy. You might be able to figure out what type of energy by rubbing your hands together really fast. What happens there? You probably feel a little bit of heat being formed. This is what we call thermal energy, and the same thing happens when you move that box across the floor. So find the speed of your package at the end of your push. From our work energy theorem, we know that the net work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. We found the net work in the previous example, so now all we really need to do is find the change in kinetic energy. Earlier, we found the kinetic energy of the box on the conveyor belt to be 3.75 joules. So we have our initial kinetic energy and our net work done, which fits nicely into what we need to know. This gives us 95.75 joules as our final kinetic energy. We were given the mass, so we can plug that in and rearrange a bit and find the final velocity of the box as 2.52 meters per second. So let's say we stop pushing on the box. If the friction remains constant, how far is it going to coast? Hmm, this is an interesting problem. We mentioned that friction was in fact doing negative works on the box by pushing it backwards against the applied force. So in the absence of the applied force, it would make sense that the box would eventually lose all of its kinetic energy. Now the work done by the friction is equal to the total kinetic energy of the box, which is the kinetic energy that it started with, plus the kinetic energy we gave it with our push, so 95.75 joules. And way back when, we were given the force of the kinetic friction as 5.0 newtons. So solving for the distance, we can find that the distance it coasts is 19.2 meters.